What is going on, everyone? My name's Boyt, and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action. On the left side of the map, we have Shadow Facts. On the right side of the screen, map, whatever we said, I don't know what I'm saying here. We have Soup. We've just got some uh, housekeeping going on behind the scenes here. Is, uh, is we're not sure exactly what's happening, but we're going to be jumping into game number one between these two on the map. Competitive, mega, random. It's going to be a spicy one. This is the third, fourth place match. And we are launching in right away. And we see something very spicy to kick things off here. As in the bottom of the map, in the blue color, playing as Thor. His name is Soup. I'm totally with it right now. His opponent today in the red color, playing as Thor as well. His name is Shadowfax. And we've already got a slightly different opening in this game. As Soup has decided to drop his Dwarven Gold Mine. And Shadowfax is deciding to, to mine some, go some, some wood, chop some wood here, get an extra ox card out. Very spicy. I think he could have held off on that, on that extra ox card over here and actually been able to grab a lot of these balls without producing. And that could have been a really good idea. But Soup will have the advantage going forward in this game, in the early stages of this game. Uh, but we'll see if it's going to actually amount to anything because a very, very different stylistic decision here from Shadow Facts. Generally speaking, in this Thor matchup, in the Thor mirror, in the, even the, not the Thor mirror, in the Norse mirror, the one who advances first is the one who gets most of the advantages. Uh, so by all metrics, Soup should have an advantage moving forward in this game. As we are seeing the scout looking around the map, finding some goats, it might be a very, very low hunt competitive mega random here. As Soup trying to figure out where everything is at this point. If we take a quick look at the map here and we see what's on here, it looks like it is an incredibly low hunt competitive mega random. Both players going to be... Very, very safe in the early game. So this is going to favor Shadowfax quite significantly here, uh, if we're completely honest, because he's not going to—he's not going to be on some sort of outside hunt. There's not enough. There's no food really to push off. I mean, apart from the berries over here, there's not going to be any resources for for Soup to get an advantage on in the early game here. And this is uh, this is going to look like it's going to be a, a very, very nice early game start for Shadowfax, all things considered here. Do we see a, a Ford Temple coming down for Soup? Not just yet. I mean, in total, there's like just 1,200 food or hunt on the map. There are uh, some wolves and some some lower hunt-esque uh, aggressive animals here as well as Shadowfax just scouting around. He does spot his own boar over here. We'll be dropping his temple very, very shortly. Looks like he's getting his wood over on this location as well. I imagine because Shadowfax went for saving the dwarven mine he might consider going for seti here to sit back play defensively and uh and make that work as best as he possibly can whereas soup is going to want to advance probably most likely through freya here to put early game pressure onto his opponent here but he hasn't scouted any hunt just yet uh, the map is very, very small here, as if you take a look at how many screen length it is to get over to this location here. If, we, uh, if we're just moving up here, it looks like it's two screen lengths-ish away from uh, from the opponent's line of sight at the very least. So very, very close one there. As we do see the Ring of Nibblelung being found over here for Soup. But because of, uh, because of this lack of hunt on this map, this is going to be a very, very heavy throwing Axeman and Troll matchup here. Or game for uh, for for, for this uh, for this map, and I think that Shadowfax has read it absolutely beautifully, or gambled on it absolutely beautifully, because he's, I mean, he's scouted a lot of the map right now. Both players have, but he has made a good decision right now to go through Force, and he's actually hitting Force Eddie a little bit faster than uh, Soup is uh, hitting Freya here, even without using the gold mine. So a really, really nice start here as we see Soup. He's on his berries on this position. Lots of villagers on the wood line over here. 
I wouldn't be surprised to see Soup just drop a second talent center here on the back of all of this. That would be a really, really good play uh, straight away here. But uh, he's got he's got the wood coming up. He's got the gold coming up. No no husbandry just yet. We do have husbandry already through for Shadowfax. He's got six goats in his main base. He does pick up the Harmonious Necklace. So we've got Harmonious Necklace versus Ring of Nibelung. So extra 18 gold versus an extra 10% gold income. That's a that's a really big difference there as the villagers do get pulled off that very bush line there with the troll going to be sitting on this location. Now opening up Shadowfax's base over here with a forest fire is going to be uh, a big deal over here because you can come over and click the the forest fly here and then start attacking this gold mine secure this top gold mine over here it looks like it's a really really low gold mine map as well well not really really low but pretty low with only three gold mines there as the valkyrie scouting around the top side of the map you see 300 gold in the back there for, for shadow facts he's getting out some raiding cavalry at this point throwing his houses down getting a very nice defensive base here we see the double long houses up for soup as he's got the 300 wood just about to get himself the gold he needs to drop this town center over here we'll see if he's going to go for it as he's dropping walls all along this location here as the uh as the units will be looking to drop in onto this location here as best as they can. There they go. Town Center coming up now for Soup. This is 100% the right play here uh, on this kind of a situ on this kind of a map in this kind of a situation. Uh, Soup's going to be moving around the corner of here. Going to be looking to drop a forest fire down. We'll see if Shadowfax is going to be ready to react. There is one very low HP villager here as the units do pull off of this location. The troll and the hearse are going to move over here to help out as the villagers do turn around. Obviously, this villager here will be retreating back. Could also drop himself a... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Healing Spring on this location to heal up those low HP villages if he so chooses. As we do see the cavalry coming in onto this position, going to be looking to get some pressure onto this town center. Uh, Shadowfax is going to spot that, but what is he going to be able to do to stop it is the big question as Soup's got plenty of units over here already. He will have to pull some units over here to get some damage onto the, onto the raiding cavalry that are going to be slowing the town center down. But right now, uh, right now, Shadowfax has got to figure out something to do here in this game with his army. He's got to figure out where he can attack as the Valkyrie of Soup getting kind of caught out just a little bit there. 54 HP remaining. We'll be retreating back as we are still seeing that raiding cavalry moving around here, causing some problems as the throw and axeman does end up going down. A house coming down for Soup as well as his town center is now up. And it's going to go straight in to that booming fun time here for Soup. He's got two town centers. I imagine we'll see Shadowfax also drop his own town center on this position. We do see one raiding cavalry going down. The other one might fall there as it doesn't dodge the second uh, axe there. Two uh, raiding cavalry down for one throwing axeman there. Nice play. Big advantage here for Soup in this game. Uh, as he's now going to start dropping his farms, playing it nice and defensively. Probably should cut, stop building Olsarks at this point. You don't want too many Olsarks in the Norse War. You really want raiding cavalry, throwing axemen as the uh, as the real decision here. But the question is going to be, Shadowfax right now has got map control to some degree. So will he just go for a third town center, grab this forward one in the face of Soup, or at least try to, and will Soup be able to know that that's something that could potentially happen here? As Shadowfax is getting himself farms. He's getting himself medium cavalry here to boot. Uh, and we'll see if uh, maybe Soup is going to decide to try and grab this town center as well. Uh, as he'll move out onto the map to get that fairly soon. Three farms down over here. Two farms for Shadowfax. Just about to finish up on the goats as well. As... Unfortunately, a fairly uh, a, a fairly low food map in this matchup does mean the fireworks don't end up uh, happening too much here. As we see the map going to be getting completely walled off here by Soup as he's trying to cut off this entire top of the map, potentially setting up a trade route for the, for the later stages of the game as the Raiding Cavalry are going to be moving around here trying to find something to attack as we see some more farms coming around on this town center ever so slowly. 
As a random house does get spotted over here. The units on this position do get spotted here by Shadow Fax. He will be sniping down one of those Ulfsark, it seems. The Ulfsark might get back here as we do see a little bit of speed walking by Soup to get those units back. He's got his Valkyrie here to heal that one back up. And we will be seeing a, uh, a gold mine, Dwarven gold mine, getting thrown down by Shadow Fax in his main base. So this does give him an advantage right here, right now. As he's, uh, as he's not going to have to move over onto a second gold mine just yet. But while this is going on, we see the back town center going up here for Shadow Facts. I don't know that I particularly like this play from Shadow Facts. He's got all the advantage here. So grabbing the Ford town center makes the most sense. As we do see one villager getting sniped. There are lots of resources in the bank here for Soup. As Soup comes over here, going to be looking for the defensive position. I wouldn't mind seeing a wall over here to secure this gold mine as well. As... Uh, I imagine Soup's going to be looking to try and get to the Heroic Age as fast as he possibly can here in this game. And, I mean, oftentimes in these kind of situations, it comes down to rag. And whoever forces the rag first generally ends up winning this matchup. Uh, so we'll see how that's going to go. But at this point, Shadowfax obviously going to have the advantage in terms of uh, village account here. He's going to be able to catch up, already has caught up, and he's going to be able to motor ahead because of his extra town center. But Soup will have the heroic age uh, spike here. He's got a lot of gold in the bank as well to make those to make those uh, frost giants. He's also moving up onto this gold mine over here to boot as he's moving his infantry into position. But I mean, one thing you can do here is if, if he's got some dwarves on this location, dwarves over here, seven dwarves there, plus the dwarves over here, just take everyone, put them onto gold, and actually buy the Mythic Age really, really quickly here. As we see the uh, the wooden walls coming down over here, trying to defend on this position, but it does look like Soup out of position here just a little bit. There is going to be a very easy retreat path, though, for the Supian Dwarves as the Raiding Cavalry do sneak on to this position spot. The uh, Thrown Axeman over here, and Soup will have to retreat back. There's the Heroic Age coming through for Soup as he's going to be dragging his Ulfsark back over here to try and defend this one. The Dwarves will get to safety for the time being, but Shadowfax can be very happy about that little bit of damage that he's done. He's got a lot of villages on this town center, villages pumping up out onto this town center as well as the Dwarven Armory coming in as Shadowfax's uh, macro here is uh, impeccable to say the very least at this point in the game as he is pulling ahead on the village account quite significantly as the army sitting over here for soup trying to figure out what to do on this position still making those old sarks out is very very scary against what's going to be coming for him you might be able to force a defensive frost here to boot as Shadowfax getting very very close to being able to advance to the next age here uh, and I mean if he pushes in and tries to take this fight right now he, he might very well need to cast his, uh, his frost here as the frost giant tries Trying to get in onto that troll over there does manage to do so. And we do see Soup indeed dropping his frost onto this position as he is a little bit far behind Shadowfax at this point. But the Scardi coming through for Shadowfax will be just that slight bit too late for uh, for Shadowfax here. He's going to be hitting it maybe about 10 seconds after the frost expires here. So all the units are going to fall by the time he can cast Frost back. Plus, we're going to be seeing the Hill Fort coming up here for Soup to try and secure this location. But that doesn't matter all too much because Shadowfax is just motoring ahead in terms of villages. His economy is absolutely huge right now. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him go into things like uh, Winter Harvest, Irrigation, and all these big upgrades as we see Soup grabbing himself Irrigation straight away. The army will be retreating back here for Shadowfax as he's saying, all right, got to get out of there. Soup is uh, getting some good damage done, but there will be a, another power spike back for, uh, for Shadowfax in the near future. He could also frost this and prevent the town center from coming up if he so chooses. As we see Bronze Mail coming through as well for uh, for Soup here. How are the armory upgrades looking for Shadowfax? Looks like he's got none at the moment, but I imagine he'll just be able to drop a couple of armories down and be completely fine as we do see Winter Harvest immediately through for Shadowfax. Hand Axe coming through for Shadowfax as well as the Irrigation is in, but I mean, Winter Harvest is better in, in nearly every single way 
as walls starting to come up on the top side of the map there raiding cavalry swinging around on this position going to try and find their way through here this gate here is only at 60 hp at this point as the army going to be retreating back we do see the frost giant getting off a special ability there to snipe down one of those raiding cavalry as more and more upgrades coming through for soup as he is attempting to get into a good position in this game i would love to see an attempt at a market up this top corner and starting a trade route for soup as well to catch up a little bit on the villager count here in this game is still very very much behind as we do see the forest fire getting dropped over here as the army pushing forward it does get a lot of healing done from that healing spring on the back after all that damage was done there is still a frost remaining here for shadowfax as shadowfax has been forced to drop that one there we see another hill fort getting dropped as both players wanting to go into their yarls at this point to hold on both players have got ulf yarls here as we see winter harvest now coming through for soup as he might be in need of just a few more farms here to get his food economy looking a little bit stronger as we see heavy infantry coming through for Shadowfax. As, I mean, both players have got some decent upgrades here. I really like that Soup's going for these armory upgrades, getting bronze mail first is a huge upgrade. It helps out your units a lot here, but we do already see bronze mail, or copper mail for Shadow Facts, so he's not really that far behind, and he does have the line uh, upgrade advantage over Soup at this point in terms of infantry, so that will end up mattering, as well as heavy cavalry coming through to boot. Do we see a marker coming up? Yes, we do in that corner over there as the village is finishing up with this location, as we do see some side Olsark coming through here to drop walls down on that position as well as one frost giant does fall we are seeing shadow facts to retreat back here ever so slightly with his units he's still got plenty of units remaining one thing that he might need here is just simply more military buildings this is something that often happens for norse players where they're too busy fighting and they forget that they need to kind of as their economy gets huge they need to go up to more and more military buildings a nice rule of thumb is around about four military buildings per town center here you've got three town centers should have 12 military buildings as we see balder coming through for shadowfax first and this isn't necessarily a, a winning thing here this isn't necessarily good either but he does have a lot of advantages here he does not want to click balda first is the most important thing because i imagine soup will be able to chase him down here very very easily meanwhile we're still seeing a slight advantage here in soup i mean copper weapons kind of cuts out that bronze mail to some degree bronze mail is slightly better then copper weapons or an extra tier of uh, of armor upgrades is slightly better than a tier of an extra tier of we of um of actual weapons upgrades from what my tests have, have done so that does mean that shadowfax is going to be getting pushed back here yet again Shadowfax is going to have to work this one out. He could be going into some Ulfsark here to try and deal with those Jarls. Making his own Jarls here to hold on. Lots and lots of those uh, cavalry units on that position. As it looks like Soup's going to be moving up to the top side over here. Soup's now got 90 villagers himself. He is caught up on villagers incredibly well here. As a Frost Giant coming through to help out. I imagine Soup's going to attempt to try and snipe that one down. As the Jarls coming around the back here going to be trying to put some pressure on. We will be seeing more Frost Giants coming out. As well as a Fire Giant to boot to come through here very very shortly villages on this gold mine for the time being as we see longhouse is coming down in this corner to try and secure a corner trade route makes a lot of sense here have we seen some trade started yes we do shadowfax getting himself those ox carts as well thundering hooves coming through for soup here and soup is going to have to think about mythic age here immediately does he have a market down he is throwing it down so he is thinking about that next age here i imagine we're going to see all the upgrades coming through for shadowfax really really shortly here keeping that fire giant alive on the back is vital Vitally important as well. I'm still surprised to see no Olsarks through for Shadowfax right now as Soup is just basically full Yarls here. He's going Yarls, he's going Olsarks. He's not bothering with any of those thrown Axemen at this point. Shadowfax trying to focus Fire Micro as best as he possibly can as this Fire Giant over here will uh, end up picking off one of those Yarls and Soup has to retreat back but still plenty of resources in the bank for Soup here to play with. But this, this retreat here does give Shadowfax time to get himself upgrades here he's getting himself irrigation quarry bronze weapons uh, and also he can start thinking about getting those champion upgrades as well as now soup spends the 2000 resources to go up to the mythic age we're seeing some shadow faxian uh old sarks swing around the top side trying to find somewhere to drop units and everything else as we do see an old sark coming into this corner of the map looking to potentially drop a market but he will spot the longhouses are already over here as soup is going to now drop his own longhouses just slightly out of range here good play by uh by soup to set that one up 
good awareness. As we see the Hill Fork coming up on this position, the Arles moving forward, the Ulf Sarks moving forward. You're going to attempt to force some sort of a Ragnarok here with this attack. It's 91 villagers here for Shadowfax to 104 for Soup as one villager will be going down. But I think Shadowfax is too smart here. Don't click Rag until your opponent clicks Rag or you are basically full upgrades has to be the only real other reason to click rag not full upgrades in a decent trade route that is with tons of uh, economy as uh, both these guys are, are adept in this matchup they've got a ridiculous amount of experience in this matchup but the dwarves moving over to the corner of the map here to grab this gold mine we'll see if they're going to make it there is shadowfax is losing a lot of villages here he is still producing more and more villages just out of the one town center out of two town centers it seems as the dwarves going to pull back here try and get over onto this large gold mine as the mostly all of uh soup's units here falling on this location as we're still seeing military buildings coming up around on this corner here if we take a look at uh a soup here is just about to finish up on this gold mine we'll see where he's going to be going as we see a sentry tower coming down for shadow facts on that bottom location over there we see meteoric iron mail coming through for shadow facts as well uh, armory upgrades right now very very close we see iron mail through for uh soup we've got obviously iron mail through for Shadow Facts as well as Bronze Weapons, but Meteoric Iron Mail already coming through is absolutely huge. It's such a big upgrade in the Norse War, and Shadow Facts absolutely knows that as the Watchtower going to come through onto this position. We're going to have the Dwarves moving through here to try and put some pressure onto this, but we'll see if, uh, if Shadow Facts is going to be able to move over onto that location to deal with that. Meanwhile, these Longhouses over here are going to be getting taken down very, very shortly here as the Watchtower does end up coming up, but there's no population here to kind of play with as the Throwing Axeman will be able to deal with that Ulf Sark. Maybe not, actually. The Ulf Sark's pretty strong here, even with Meteoric Iron Mail at this point. It's going to be pretty close. Is the Watchtower going to get a couple of damages, a little bit of chip damage done onto those Dwarves over here as the Dwarves will pull off here. We'll start attacking the... Uh the Watchtower here, as I imagine, Ulf Sark's getting pushed out onto that position to try and take down the Longhouses over here as well as the army cleaning more and more villages up on this position. We are still seeing Ox Carts getting trained here for Shadow Facts. It's still very, very close. I'm interested to see what the decision is going to be here for these players. They're both, they're both banking tons and tons of resources at this point here. Soup, Soup's obviously got more villagers than Shadowfax right now, so Shadowfax needs to consider trimming his army a bit, getting his villager count up to 100 villagers here. Otherwise, this is just going to be too many rag heroes as we do see this wall getting broken down and a hill fort coming down onto this position just out of line of sight here as the uh, longhouse does get taken out on this position and now we're going to start seeing the units moving across the map. Leaving these longhouses here might be a little bit dangerous as uh, as Soup might want to decide to make some units over there as we see the market getting positioned over here. Wouldn't mind seeing walls getting thrown up and everything else over here as a uh, market does end up getting moved into that location there as champion infantry huntress axe iron weapons of thor coming through here for shadow facts as the ballast are starting to push in onto this position soup going to be retreating back the most important thing with ballister is walls you need to wall your ballister in it's super hard to make it's super super hard to do it after the fact so after you build the baluster it's really hard to do it so always before you build baluster slap down a wall where you want to be using them otherwise they just get taken down it's a lot of resources as well as the uh the frost giant here very low hp but it can move in and take out one of those fire giants here as uh, it looks like shadow is just waiting on his on his special ability there coming in underneath the healing spring for a hot second as you do see some champion units moving in onto this position over here we've nearly got full upgraded uh, Norse units here. Obviously, no no Pierce armor here for Shadowfax. Doesn't really want to waste any time on that, even though he's got all the resources in the world here. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing a uh, a Titan attempt here from both players, in all honesty. Uh, stop building Fire Giants and everything. Go Titan here to hit Ragnarok. Rag Titan wouldn't be a bad idea here. Rag Titan Wonder wouldn't be a bad idea either in this situation, as we see Hammer of the Gods coming through here for Shadowfax. Soup, on the other hand, still is just about to get himself champion infantry. We see Dwarven Augur coming through as well for Soup as he wants to start hitting that, as we do see the walls coming up and this is what i'm saying before the ballast to come out throw the walls down this is going to be very very annoying here for soup to deal with and we are seeing now soup moving forward onto this position to click his ragnarok now it's 
uh, 388 villagers for soup. How many villagers or how much population for Shadowfax? He's down 40 population, which is 30 units. No, 20 units. It's a big, big deal. So we'll see if uh, Shadowfax can hold here. He does have what seems to be the armory advantage here by quite a bit here. 17.6 damage for soup to 17.6 uh, damage for Shadowfax, but he does have the uh, the hack, hack armor in. He's now got Hammer of the Gods, so he's at 18.7 damage. So there is an advantage there as the army going to be moving in onto this position. Unfortunately for Shadowfax, he does lose his baluster on this position as the army going to be moving in onto this fortified town center. I'm not sure that matters all too much as the units here for Soup are so overwhelmingly strong here, but Soup's numbers are dropping like flies as it seems that just that little bit of extra armor is making all of the difference in this fight over here. As, I mean, Soup's got plenty of resources to boot after this. As long as he doesn't lose too hard on uh, on any position here, he should be completely fine. But the houses over here will be falling, and this is going to be a difficult position now for Soup to deal with if he if he can't win on this location, trying to break through the hill forts, trying to break through the Migdal stronghold here as well. As the army trying to break down this hill fort, they will pick that off. Soup now dropping down to 133 of 120 population. He's not even getting his villagers back out just yet as the... Uh, Heroes of Ragnarok are going to take out this location here. Will we be seeing just mass throwing axe on? I guess so. As Shadowfax might want to just grab himself a Titan here. This might sound strange, but he's got plenty of resources. Sell some wood, buy some food, get a Titan, and then there'll be no counter for it because Soup will have no units left to get his own Titan out as it, as it is. I mean, both players don't sell uh, sell their wood for very much here. Is the army going to come over here, try and defend this? We do see those Dwarven Augur portal rams going to move in and take out the hill fort on this position. But while this is all going on, the front is going to be falling here. We still have plenty of units here for Shadowfax. And the re-economization is on the way as we see some watchtowers coming down on this position. Eight rag heroes versus eight rag heroes. Shadowfax needs to pay attention here to fight this one off. He does still have the advantage in terms of armory as his arm as his unit's gonna come over here at seven ox caravans for soup. But I'm I'm sure those are gonna get picked off, and this is gonna be a huge advantage moving forward as the army coming back in onto this position yet again. There is only 1300 uh, HP left on this fortified town center. So if uh, if Shadowfax pays attention here, he should be able to take this down with just only five of those heroes of Ragnarok. Wouldn't be that, or even four of them might be able to take it down. We'll have to wait and see if that's going to be a, a possibility as Soup desperately trying to hold in on to this position over here as his ox caravans have been cut off for the time being. Now we've got fire giants moving in. We've got the ballast getting produced here for Shadowfax as well. Plenty of resources in the bank. Plenty of opportunity to spam out those ox caravans as well as the heroes of Ragnarok on this position getting sniped down by the towers. We do see Soup getting some towers down on this position as well, but it's not going to be that effective anymore. Meanwhile, here at Fire Giants moving forward straight into the Heroes of Ragnarok of Shadowfax as the Town Center does survive here with 1300 HP. And the army going to break through here for or attempt to break through here for Shadowfax. He's got plenty of resources in the bank and Soup, or population I should say, and Soup does decide to tap out there. Shadow thanks with the patience there. It's always going to be... <laughs> it's always going to be... The winner is always going to be in the rag war is always going to be the one who clicks rag second. Doesn't matter. I mean, maybe if Soup had had Meteoric Iron Mail Meteor and Hammer of the Gods, the two Thor upgrades, maybe he would have been able to push through here and he would have won with the extra population he had. But he just didn't have the... He just didn't get them for some reason. It looked like he had the resources for it, but he just didn't get those upgrades. And and that was really the big difference here. I mean, if you take a look at the, at the military units at the end here, you can see 120 to only 112, which is a really big difference in all honesty, uh, but Shadowfax manages to get, take the first game. We'll move on to game number two very, very shortly. If you're enjoying this series and you like the tournament and all the other good stuff that happens on this channel, please consider hitting the follow. And if you're on the YouTube, hit the subscribe button. See you guys in the next one.